Our children do not need fixing. Welcome back to the podcast. All right, you guys know who I am. I'm Heather Chauvin. I don't need to tell you that. We have a lot coming up. I'm getting really, really excited. It's two more days and then my kids are out of school and it's inspiring me to not only relaunch Teach Your Kids to Meditate, so I'm doing a live round. We start on Tuesday, so if you guys want in, Tuesday, July 2nd, you need to register before then, so head on over to Heather Chauvin dot com forward slash kids and that will take you right to the program page register once you're in you're going to join the facebook group there's going to be um, content you're going to get weekly content that you can do at your own pace and then i also have two times a week a uh, group q a and you can even you can even write those questions in if you can't make it live. So no excuses. Teach Your Kids to Meditate is all about helping you understand your child's behavior and have the tools and strategies to turn things around. But today I want to talk about something that is going to give you insight into my views and my values as not only a coach, but a parent. Our children do not need to be fixed. I was talking to a colleague the other day and I was talking about this program and how I've been talking about it more and more on social media and underneath sometimes, you know, you get comments and somebody will say, I've already tried meditating with my kid and they just won't do it properly. Uh, The breathing doesn't work. Um, You know, my kid won't talk to me, let alone sit in a room with me and meditate. And I get it. The title, it's misleading, right? Because when I did start the pro, when I did, it's not misleading, but when I did start the program, it was all about teaching that one skill, right? Teaching the skill of mindfulness. But since then, um, it's evolved. It's evolved because as parents, it's our responsibility to really understand what is going on with our children's behavior. So I've engulfed more of my philosophy into this program. So you're getting you're getting the training, you're getting the understanding, the tools. And then I'm also throwing in there the aligned workshop and the energetic time management, which are two modules that have been game changers uh, for my mastery students. So you're getting all of that at a very, very affordable price. I even have a payment plan for you. So check that out at heatherchauvin.com forward slash kids. Um, Your children do not need to be fixed though. I've told this story before, but I'm going to tell it again. When I started this whole process, I used to do workshops with children and, um, you know, the parents would drop them off and they would say, okay, go play, go have fun. And I remember this one time, this parent dropping a little girl off and coming, she came back to pick her up and she's like, so did you fix her behavior? Like flat out said that to me. And I looked at her like super confused I'm like, what was this woman's intention? What was this woman's intention? And her intention was that, you know, meditation or mindfulness, you know, the workshop that the tool that I was teaching her daughter was the quick fix that was going to solve all of her problems. And I think this is a parenting epidemic, uh, like hardcore cultural epidemic that we believe Um, if we just get our child to do something, that is the key to all of our problems. Um, no, that is not, (laughs) it's not that easy. And I'll tell you why it's not that easy because we are the problem. We're part of the problem. It's our life, right? It's our belief systems. It's how we react. It's how we show up in our own life. And there is nobody, nobody in my life that pisses me off or drives me nuts. It's not their fault. It's how I react to it. It's how I react to it. It's my relationship in my mind to this child, to this person. So When people say, is this going to fix my child's problem? Well, part of the problem is that you feel your child needs to be fixed. 
I also get questions like, does this work for children with sensory processing? Does this work with children with autism? Does this work with children, yada, yada, yada? This is another issue. Just because your child has a diagnosis doesn't mean they are not worthy of learning a tool or strategy like mindfulness. We can shift it to meet that human being's needs because I'll tell you the way that I like to meditate and the way that my neighbor likes to meditate and the way that you know some monk or guru meditates are going to be very different. Mindfulness is about finding you, finding your way of being in the world. And it's like saying everybody learns the same way. And if you have a child in school, most likely you've already discovered that Mm -hmm. there is truth to what they say of multiple intelligence and multiple way of learning, multiple learning styles. I am a very visual learner. I'm learning as I grow my business and go out into the world and writing and all of that stuff that I don't learn things traditionally and I got to figure out what works for me and I got to honor that and own that. And a lot of me is I need to unlearn, unlearn what I've been taught as a child. When adults put their expectations on me and said, Heather, if you don't learn it this way, you're bad. There's something wrong with you. And that's the thing with our children is we are already putting that expectation that if you don't do something this way, you are a bad person. You are wrong. And then we wonder why they have self-esteem issues. So it might not be you. It might be a teacher, somebody else in their life, uh, the other parent. Uh, I have no idea realizing that you know we, as a parent, can become the best version of ourselves for our children. We can be so present. We can, you know, try to be so conscious when we're talking to them, but our children go out into the world and they experience other people who are not conscious, who think that our children need to be fixed. So today I just, I wanted you to know that your child does not need to be fixed. This is a co-creation. So in my work, there's always two relationships that I'm working on the most, the one with ourselves and the one realizing, you know, we are the teachers for our children. So a lot of times people come with, come to me for two pain points. One, my child is out of control. Like I don't know how to control them. I don't know how to support them. I don't know how to help them. And on the opposite side, it's, oh, I am out of control. I don't feel in control. They're connected, but at the same time, they're individual. Does that make sense? It's like having, it's like my two dogs, two dogs, but when they're together, they're two different dogs. They change, they shift, but when they're individual, they act completely different. They're two separate beings, but in relationship together, they act different. So um, somebody asked me this question and I posted it on my Facebook fan page. I've been doing a little bit of um, videos and things like that, but most likely I'm going to be spending a lot of my time on Instagram. I'm loving Instagram. I don't know about you guys. It just, the platform is increasing. Now they have IGTV, so I'm spending more time on Instagram. Um, The interesting part about um, this little video I posted was I said, my son had a meltdown in the car. And this is how I dealt with it without yelling. So I asked for his permission. This is my oldest son. And he, I don't know where we were going. I'm probably going to say the story differently than I did on, on Facebook, but, um, I think we were coming home from school or, oh, I know what it was. So we had to go pick up vegetables. We were picking up vegetables from our local farm share on, on went last Wednesday or something. And this was after school. So we're driving and I have all three kids in the car and it's that witching hour, they call it that awkward moment in between after school and dinner where, you know, you're throwing snacks at them, but it's not working. It's just the odd weird time. 
So I'm in the car and I'm like, oh, they're going to freak out. Like, I just know it. I know they're going to lose their shit. And they're like, mom, where are we going? Where are we going? And, you know, they're asking me to go to this one particular place. And I know we're not going there. So I'm like holding my breath, like, oh shit. Like, how am I going to get to this place without them losing their mind? So I'm like throwing granola bars at them. I'm like, here, I got a bottle of water. Like, go for it. Drink it. And I'm just, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm in my green zone. I'm feeling good. Um, you know, not, not always in my green zone, but I'm feeling good. So I'm driving, driving, driving. And my oldest is sitting next to me in the passenger seat. he's like, where are we going? I'm like, we're going to go get the vegetables. And he loses it. And he's like swearing and he throws a toddler tantrum inside of a 13 year old body. And I'm sitting there and I'm driving. I'm like, focus on the road, focus on the road. And I'm not entering my yellow zone. I'm not entering my red zone. I don't know if it was a good day or if I just had like, you know, really good coffee beans or something. I have no idea, but I was freaking proud of myself because I'm like, okay, I'm good. And in that moment, and guys, it doesn't always happen like this, but in that moment, this is what I'm trying to tell you and trying to teach you. While my son is in his red zone, having a human experience of an emotional poop, like letting go of his emotions, right? This is healthy. This is what we want our children to do. I'm just sitting there driving, holding space for him while he's losing his shit. And he's just verbally expressing. He's not like, you know, pulling the wheel or anything. He's just verbally expressing what's going on. And in that moment, I'm saying to myself, just hold space, just hold space. I don't need to say anything. I don't need to stop the car and look at him and say, stop yelling, stop it, stop it. If you don't do this, you're grounded. I don't need to do any of that. Why? Because we are so freaking afraid of allowing our children to express their emotions. We're so afraid of allowing our children to express who they are. So... The other two catch on and they start whining. So everybody's now in their red zone and I'm not in my red zone. And again, I talk a lot about this being proactive, you know, filling your cup so you're not losing your shit. And for whatever day, the stars align this day and I was feeling okay. So I'm just driving. I'm like, Heather, just hold space. Just hold space. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. And it did. It took about three minutes, three to five minutes And then they calm down and it's like, are you guys done now? And they're like, yep, you could just tell the lull was there. And I knew they were pissed off. Who wants to go get vegetables, right? And in their mind, they had an expectation of me of where I was going to go. And I just, I was letting it be, but I was allowing them to be, I was allowing them to express. I was allowing them to let it out, let it out. As adults, you freaking hold everything in. And then you lose your mind and you, you know, your life falls apart. You're like, why did this happen? It happened because you weren't taught how to let it out. So let your kids express their emotions. So they express. And this is my thing. I, when people say to me, I feel very disrespected in that moment especially when a child is projecting their anger onto you and saying, uh, you are a, don't you dare, you know, I hate you, all of that stuff. I don't, um, allow that. Like that's a non-negotiable. You don't swear at me. You don't do whatever, but in a red zone, when a child is in a red zone, you can't address the problem. You cannot address the problem when a child is in the red zone. So I let it go for that moment, but I'm going to circle back around to it. I'm going to circle back. I'm going to circle back. By the time we got the vegetables, we got the vegetables. My son was trying to hold it together. He's like, all right, boys. He's telling his little brothers, we got to be cool. We got to be good. If we got to calm down, because if we don't calm down, one, mom's going to lose her mind. And two, we're not going to get what we want. So he, after he had his emotional poop, after he had his little freak out, he was uh, holding it together and he's like, okay, I got to turn this around. So I go in, I get the vegetables, they're waiting in the car and I come back out and they're all calm because his brother kind of took the reins and he looks at me and he goes, I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the way that I acted. I know I shouldn't have called you that and reacted that way. And um, I just, the reason why I reacted was because I wanted to go to yada, yada, yada. I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything, guys. I didn't prompt that conversation. I didn't say anything. This has been years in the making. So I looked at him with no anger, no resentment, and I said, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for apologizing for your behavior. In that moment, what my son was doing was taking emotional responsibility for his actions. Emotional responsibility. And I looked at him and I said, you know that we need to work on your words when you are mad. Because I will not allow you to talk to me like that when you're mad. You can get mad and angry, but you can't say hurtful words to people. Because your words matter. In that moment, I am still present. And then we go home and it's done. No residual anger, no resentment. I'm not holding on. I'm not punishing. I didn't say, you're all grounded. And when we get home, you're all going to your room and I'm taking everything away from you. I literally forgot about it before we got home. So when people say to me, how do I get my child to fill in the blank? How do I get my child to listen to me? How do I get my child to respect me? How do I get my child to sit at the kitchen table? How do I get my child to meditate? How do I get my child to breathe? My daughter has severe anxiety. How can I help her? The difficult part about my job is that there is no black and white answer and I am not here to solve your problems. I am here to help you solve your own problems. And with that, not everybody is ready to do that work. Not everybody is ready to take emotional responsibility when their whole lives, they've one, been taught to suppress their anger, been taught never, never to express yourselves. Who am I? Creativity? No way. Being creative is for lazy people. You can't just sit there for an hour and journal or meditate or play with the kids in the pool or paint. Take a day off work and do nothing without being on vacation. What? You have to be ready to do this work. I'm not going to lie. It's uncomfortable. But when you go to the store and you're looking for that book on how to solve all of your problems and you read the book and you're like, well, that was inspiring, but my life hasn't changed. It's not going to. You have to implement what's in that book and it's going to be uncomfortable. And this is why I'm not in the business of selling diet pills because You all know that shit don't work. And the reason why you lose weight is still not going to make you happy. You got to dig deep. So that said, if repairing your relationship with your child, meaning you want to feel really fucking good as a parent, you want to feel like I did this, I got this, shit hit the fan today and And I was okay with it. And I feel in control of my own big emotions. And I feel like a really good teacher on how to teach these tools and strategies and walk this path with my child. Then teach your kids to meditate for you. So we start Tuesday. New content. 
live group Q&A with me. There will be messages, emails that go out um, asking you what your questions are if you can't um, if you can't do it. The group Q&A is on the actual outline is on um, the registration page. So head on over to Heather Chauvin. So my last name is spelled C-H-A-U-V-I-N.com forward slash kids with an S. K-I-D-S. You'll see the program. You'll see some testimonials. You'll see how it's laid out. We're going to rock this summer. I want you to feel like a really good parent. I want you to feel like you can be present with your kids. The best quote I ever heard, and Carrie, if you're listening, I think it was you. She said, I didn't have children for the tax return benefit. And I was like, yes. I want you to reconnect with why you had children in the first place and teach your kids to meditate is going to help you get your life back and help you feel confident as a parent. But you got to do the work. So head on over to teachyourkidstomeditate.com forward slash kids. We start Tuesday. Let's go, guys.